All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free. Chicka chicka, learning. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna do another oblique central impact problem. And this time, I will use my imagination. I have two particles, one kilogram, and then the mass of B is two kilogram. We'll do before impact, the velocity of A before impact, so we'll call that VA1, is equal to three meters per second, and the velocity of B before impact is five meters per second, and the coefficient of restitution between both particles is let's go with 0.4 and we want to find the velocity of each particle after him and we'll get magnitude and direction and here's what it looks like in the schematic I like to draw the before and after so what I'll do is I'll show you the before and then I'll just copy and paste the after. here's what the the particles look like and we'll say a is at the bottom because it's smaller and weighs less say the velocity here is just straight up horizontal so this will be VA get VB straight down before impact. So we'll call this VB1, VA1. We know the magnitude and the direction. It collides at this point right here. And this right here, when I connect the dots, that collision point and the mass centers, this represents the line of impact. And depending on which textbook you use or what what who, what your instructor does or chooses, and we'll say from that point to the right of that point is plus N, the normal direction. And all we're doing is defining a coordinate system. If you like calling it X and Y, you can do that. This, this perpendicular line to the perpendicular to the line of impact is the plane of impact and this plus t and so now the challenge is to have some angles defined and usually the angles will be given and so if i know here we can make this just geometrically challenging just by saying that relative right make it a little bit more complicated for us we'll say that's 60 degrees so if that's 60 degrees then what is this angle right here no so here if i draw another horizontal line right here i know so this angle is 60. Oh, then that's 30. This is 30. Good. And then this angle, what about, what is this angle right here? So here, if I drew again, a horizontal right here, it's, it's also 60. Yep, that's it. All right. So now that we have this, this is, these are my angles. So I have this information right now, and then I'm gonna draw pretty much the exact same drawing for after impact. So we're still working on the schematic. This is gonna be my before impact stage. And now I'm going to draw my after impact. My after impact drawing is slightly different in the sense that I have no idea about the magnitudes and directions of the particles after impact. And so what I do is I know that there's going to be a velocity vector associated with the particle point B here. And I'm going to assume that it's that velocity vector points in the positive T and the end directions, right? So technically speaking, I will have, I'll just draw this like this. There's some VB2 and it has some angle, I'll call it theta B. And notice I drew it in the positive sense according to my N and T component. So what I have is an unknown magnitude and an unknown direction. Same, I could do the same for particle A, at particle A after impact. And again, I'm gonna draw that vector. Also, I'll call it VA2, this is after impact. And I'm gonna call that angle theta A, magnitude and direction of the velocity after impact. But again, I don't know what it is. I don't know the direction. I have a sense that particle A is probably going downwards, but I don't know by how much. But when I do it, with the way I set this up, I assume positive. A another way to do it that you might see elsewhere in my videos or something is instead of writing it like this, I could write the velocity vectors as, you know, broken up into components. So I would say that this would be VB2N and this would be VB2 T. Again, that's exactly the same thing as the blue arrow, but instead I just, instead of having an unknown angle, I just have two components. And I can do the same thing here. So it's your choice. You can use either the purple or the, the magnitude and angle. I personally prefer VA2N and then VA2T. And, and the only reason is because when I, I'm going to apply conservation of momentum in the N and T directions, I don't want to have to keep writing like VA2 cosine theta A, VA2 sine theta A, right? I could just write VA2N, VA2T. All right. All right, all right. So now that we have the schematic, if we understand the schematic, you, you could tell we have four unknowns. So we're hopefully we'll have four 
four equations. First relationship that we're going to apply is for the entire system in the direction or in the line of impact, we're going to apply conservation of momentum. Or this would be in the plus n direction. I would have ma, I would have ma va1 cosine of 60 degrees plus mb. And this velocity vector, the n component, is in the negative n direction. So I would write negative vb1 cosine of 30 degrees is equal to ma va 2n plus mb vb 2n. So there's my one equation. I, I do know the math. I do know the velocities. This is one equation with 2n. What I normally do next is conservation of momentum in the t direction, but you, you could actually go straight to the coefficient of restitution. So conservation of momentum, plane of impact direction. But in this direction, there are no exchange of impulses between the two particles. I can use the conservation of momentum for each individual part. And this would be the plus T direction. Like, and so for the first particle, I would have like MA VA1. And I would be looking at here, check this out right here. I have, here's that, that N component that we had. Here is the T component. This right here is VA1T. And this, what I notice about it is that that should be MA, MA. A negative VA1 sine of 60 degrees is equal to the momentum of A because again, there's no exchange of particles or sorry, no exchange of impulses or forces in that direction, in the T direction. So this would be MA VA 2T. And then similarly within the, for the other particle or the B particle, positive in this direction again, I would have MB negative VB1 sine of 30 degrees equals MB VB2T. And I can already tell here the masses cancel right here. And this would just tell me that VA2T is equal to negative three meters per second times the sine of six. So negative 2.60 meters per second. And then I can do the same for VB2T. And that would just tell me VB2T is negative five meters per second sine of 30 degrees which is half and that would be negative 2.5 meters per second and, and that's actually that's two of my answers so last but not least we have to address still the end direction and the other relationship is the coefficient of restitution and in order to apply the coefficient of re restitution it has to have an, some impulses in that direction it turns out to be a ratio of relative velocities after and before impact so here plus n direction right here in the plus n direction and this coefficient of restitution Institution is VB2N minus VA2N over VA1N minus VB1N or BAB. <laughs> And this is, this ratio is, what did we say? We said it's like closer to plastic than elastic. Yes, 0.4. So we said 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And we have here, let's see, um, we have VB, you know, 2N minus VA2N, which are our two unknowns in this equation, 0.4 times VA1N. Uh, VA1N was VA1 cosine 60 minus VB1N, which was negative VB, negative VB1 cos 30 degrees. This was three meters per second. VB1 was five meters per second. We have a second equation. So I'll label this one number one, and this one number two, and I'm gonna solve two equations, two unknowns add both equations together. I get VB2N is negative 1.61 meters per second and VA2N is... So now that I have the components for each of the particles after impact, feel good about these numbers right here. I feel better, but who knows? I could be wrong. Not perfect, but I find that all the values are negative, which means that everything seems to be going down or at least in the negative directions that we put chose for N and T. So what I would do is I would take my drawing again here. And then last but not least, just to resolve these vectors, edit. And now I take my final answers right here. Now I to draw this, my final velocities for A in the N direction, I have negative 3.94. 
which would be the velocity vector going this way. This would be 3.94 meters per second away opposite in the negative n direction. So this is 3.94 meters per second. And in the t direction for a, it's 2.6. So I'd be going like this, 2.6 meters per second in the negative t direction. And if I want to find the actual total ve velocity vector, then I just draw like this and boom, this, this would be VA2. Boom. I could do the same for the B mass or the B particle. The N component is 1.61 meters per second. 1.61 meters per second in the negative N direction. And then 2.5 meters per second. And then again, if I want to combine this, it would be like that right here. And this would be VB2. And then I can use my tangent function and calculate this angle or any angle that I need to. And I could call this like theta B and I call this theta A. And if I, if just in case you want to know tangent theta B, if I want to solve this would be the opposite, which is 2.5 over 1.61. And then I would get that theta B is 57. 7.2 degrees uh, relative to that normal normal and then theta a again opposite over the adjacent which would be 2.6 over 3.94 and theta a is 33.4 degrees relative to n or the line of impact if i wanted the magnitudes of these velocities so here the velocity of b here would be the square root of some squares at magnitude and this would be 1.61 meters per second squared plus 2.5 meters per second squared. And that magnitude is 2.97 meters per second. And the magnitude of A, similarly using the square root of some squares, is equal to 4.72 meters per second. And we have an angle relative to the normal and you can also figure a lot of stuff out because we know this line right here was 60 degrees. So if you needed it relative to the horizontal or relative to the vertical, which is probably more common to figure out, then you you know you got to do a little bit more, a little bit more math. So for instance, one thing I would know is that here, if I drew a horizontal line here, I know this is also 60 degrees. So relative to the horizontal going in a counterclockwise direction, it would be 60 plus 57.12. And then in the same thing here, I know this right here, and I know this is 60 degrees relative to the horizontal. All right, hopefully that was helpful and useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Switch your